Welcome. My name is Kitlach Inagak Stros, and I'm an outreach coordinator at the Arctic Eider Society, working on SIKU, the Indigenous Knowledge Social Network. SIKU is a tool to support knowledge transfer, language preservation, and environmental stewardship by and for Indigenous communities. It supports subsistence hunters on the land through jobs in environmental monitoring, as well as safety and navigation services, such as the new SIKU map and satellite imagery on mobile devices. It supports communities to address their own priorities and lead programs through project management tools that facilitate reporting, real-time decision-making, and stewardship. The SIKU team is here to help provide training, support, develop new tools, and even provide funding for your community-led climate action projects. Inuit have the knowledge, expertise, and desire for leadership in our own future in research, conservation, management, and governance. Using SIKU has enabled us to remove some of the barriers that have impeded progress because of a lack of appropriate tools that respect Indigenous knowledge frameworks and capacity gaps for project management in our communities. We're going to present case studies to show how Inuit and Cree have been transforming the role of our communities in environmental leadership. Communities and regional organizations have been using SIKU to develop programs that support local economies based on fishing, hunting, and being on the land. These programs also contribute to community-based or regional stewardship of the land and ocean. The Goose Watch and Ice Watch this year were very successful in showing how SIKU can facilitate knowledge transfer and collaboration within and between communities, while demonstrating the large-scale impact of Indigenous communities working together across the Arctic. This spring, the second annual SIKU Goose Watch took place. Inuit and Cree used SIKU to share knowledge about geese among neighboring communities and to crowdsource the timing of migration, nesting, and hatching for multiple species across the region. Participating individuals used SIKU to document the arrival of geese in their community by posting observations, hunting stories, and later in the season, nesting and egg harvest posts. With almost 700 posts from 31 communities, from Okovic to Taktuyaktu and James Bay to Greece Fjord. The Goose Watch shared knowledge between communities and demonstrated the ability of Inuit and Cree to systematically and quantitatively document large-scale processes like an annual goose migration as never seen before. Youth, elders, and hunters contributed to tracking the timing of migration, nesting, hatching, and other key demographic parameters of these migratory birds which will provide an ongoing basis for monitoring populations and assessing large-scale changes across the North. The Goose Watch highlights the power of SIKU for sharing knowledge and working together across the broad geographies of the Arctic and as a tool for environmental monitoring. Not to mention, it's a really fun way to share stories of kids getting their first geese. This year, we launched the SIKU plus Smart Ice Ice Watch. The goal was to promote language preservation and knowledge transfer about ice safety in communities across the North. A key part of this was mobilizing Inuktut sea ice terminology across dialects to describe ice conditions. On Siku, photos and posts can be tagged with Inuktut ice terms, allowing Inuit to use Inuit our own knowledge system, to document environmental processes. Using the IcePost tool on Siku, Inuit used our language and ice classification system to take photos, identify hazards, and contribute to a Siku ice map across 37 communities. Almost 300 posts were made by 111 users. Seeing the different ice conditions shared across the North was amazing and launched many exciting conversations about different kinds of ice and Inuktut terminology. Through their participation in the Ice Watch, SIKU users were also contributing to the SIKU Ice Map, which shows the Duvap, Landfast Ice, and Sidnap, Flow Edge, from a Canadian ice service all across the North, how rough the Duvap ice is from radar satellites, and most importantly, features ice posts made by local experts. 
This demonstrates how tools like the Siku Ice Map that facilitate local safety and knowledge transfer also allow Inuit to play a leading role in climate science by contributing to ground truthing and training classification of satellite imagery, increasing relevance of products to communities while using their own knowledge system to document environmental change. Stay tuned, because each year the Siku Ice Map will just keep getting better as more people contribute. This is an extremely exciting model that can be applied more generally to empower a leading role for indigenous knowledge in northern climate science. It demonstrates that governments and academics should invest in northern communities for large-scale climate monitoring. And that is exactly what we are working towards with our exciting new program called Sila for Siku. It's just starting up, so get in touch if you'd like to get your community or project involved. We are very excited about the amazing results coming from using Siku for the Rikikde Protected Areas Program. Over 100 elders, women, men, and youth are using Siku to document harvesting and wildlife observations across seasons, crowdsourcing an annual food wheel and distribution map for a resource inventory and as a basis for a new whole of community approach to guardian programs and managements. I'd like to pass it over to Sanikilo HTA manager and Arctic Irish Society founding board member, Lucasi Aragutena, to tell you more about how Siku is being used for Kikik Day. Siku has been very helpful for um, resource inventory for um, protected areas where Siku is involved with over 100 people. They collect the information, what they harvest, where they went, how they travel, stomach content those kind of things. And the whole community is kind of involved. Even the, the people who, who do not know how to use the app, there's some young people helping them to hunt with them. They are all part of the process, which will be very helpful to establish well, marine protected areas. One good thing about the bicycle is also a continuation of the reindeer survey. In the past, even though we were doing, doing a ground survey, we didn't know how many were harvested because the hunters was not reporting to, to us. But last spring, using Siku to report the female, yearling, male, we know exactly how many have been harvested, that kind of thing. So it's going to be very helpful to make uh, some kind of management decision for the whole community. Well, I think we we'll also really help us with the inventory on other ducks uh, with the environment Canada last spring. They, we don't need really anyone to come in and do it for us because we already know what to do and, and because we can do it ourselves for years to come. I think what we're doing with the Siku, I think it's going to take a lead role for the for us Inuit to look after our own affairs, manage our own system, manage our own wildlife or environment, using our own Inuit knowledge. It's an Inuit to hunt. It's not just a technical information. It's the information collected in a way that, hopefully in a way that scientists or government will understand how we do things. Thanks, Lucasy. As you have seen, this whole of community approach supports local food security, has contributed to real-time management decisions by the Hunters and Trappers Association. It is equitable, comprehensive, provides diverse engagement in the process, and is a compelling model for future governance of indigenous-led protected and conserved areas. This is what is really exciting about Siku. It's not the technology, but the leading role for Inuit knowledge in decision-making, the empowerment of Inuit in managing our own projects, the compelling large-scale results of working together and sharing knowledge across communities. While the technology is cool, Siku is just a tool. What it is helping demonstrate is that with the right tools and support for programs led by Northern communities, Indigenous knowledge can play a leading role in science and support Inuit-led governance and self-determination in research, management, and environmental stewardship. The Arctic Eider Society is an Inuit-led charity 
supporting self-determination for thriving northern communities. Get in touch to learn more about how we can support your local climate action projects and stewardship efforts in northern communities. Thank you. Bye.